Hello. Good evening, good evening, or good afternoon, as usual. Never sure what to call this time of the day. It could be evening, it could be afternoon, it could be late afternoon. Sun is up and shining. Lovely afternoon for me. The microphone is on. Yes, it is. And Richie is out. I think he's actually outside. I think he's, I think he's on the terrace as usual. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. My hair, my head is huge because I've been to the beach and it was lovely and awesome. And sometimes I actually can go to the beach, which is literally just, just there behind my screen. Behind my screen, there's a, there's a park and then there's the beach. So that's wonderful. Good evening, Simone. Good evening to you. How are you? <clears throat> Let's just wait a few more seconds for people to gather around. Today we're doing a mini, mini English bite, one of those quick lessons on some topics, on some things that could be interesting for some of you and maybe for others are not. But, you know, it's just, just interesting to do some English, to practice some English together, even though I am the one who speaks and you are the ones who listen and sometimes perhaps interact, like Floriana right now. Good evening, Floriana. Hello. Hello, Raimonda. Good to see you. How are you? All right. Good, good. Come one, come all. Avanti. Fatevi sotto. Siamo qua. Siamo in diretta. I think, yes, I think it is time. Linda says... Hello, I'm in Rosignano Solvay in the beach close to you. Yes, indeed. It's the, it's the white beach, isn't it? Where the sand is totally white, it's chemically white, but it's lovely. It's, it's very um, impressive, isn't it? And the, and the waters are so like blue, like light blue. This is in my memory. I'm not sure I'm saying the right thing. Is that right? Our meeting time is always interesting for me, Simone. Yeah, also, <laughs> also for me, because this is when I can do these things. So it's useful that it is interesting for you too. Thank you. Emanuele says, hello. Hello, Emanuele. So before we start, let me remind you that Speak is still open, still space for enrollments for new students. Speak is this gym. <laughs> to practice English online via Zoom. It's not these lessons. It's not, it is not about these meetings on Facebook, you know, because Facebook is Facebook and it's okay and it's all very well. But the lessons that we do, the chats that we do are via Zoom, which is an online platform where we can have people, oop, mosquito, looking at us, and speaking to us, and we can see people also. So you're all there on the screen, you can see all your lovely faces, and you can also speak to us and interact properly, not just typing on, on a platform like this, like Facebook. So I recommend, I really, really recommend that if you are serious about practicing English, not just listening and hearing, which is okay, it's a good exercise for the ear, but if you do want to practice English and speak English and feel that you are in control of what you say, come on, come on, join us in Speak. Call Carmelinda, this lady here, she's scrolling around, taking around <laughs> my screen. Call her, she will give you all the information you need to sign up to become one of our students. And, you know, the summer edition also is for teenagers because as you saw on Friday we have speak junior so speak opens to a, this particular section of students aged between 11 and 13 and 14 to 17 year olds so it's now mixing adult students and junior students they are two separate things but very interesting all the same very useful because often teenagers i ragazzi do receive a good education in English at school, but feel the need to practice more. What we feel, what we think, our, our feeling is that like adult students, teenagers especially, need to practice their English, need to have a real 
feel or what the language is about. So it's all very well to listen to songs or watch videos or films. That's okay. But practicing is a different matter. And we're not talking about Sorry, my, my huge hair. Not just, we're not just talking about studying and being accurate. We're talking about communicating here, which is what we do in speak. Okay, we make mistakes because spoken English is also made of not grammatically accurate sentences, but we communicate all the same. So this is what we want and we care about. It's what we want to do in speak and open this possibility also to teen students, to junior students. It's an eight-week course of conversation, communication, but most of all, it's about unblocking the language. Same for adults. Same for adults. We play a lot. We read interesting things. We watch quick videos or interviews or things that could be useful to discuss, okay, and to extract all the vocabulary and news that we can learn. So this is, this is our purpose and this is our target. So, enough with this. Now it's time to start our lesson. Lesson. This is fun, isn't it? Doing this. Do you do this? I find myself doing this a lot, but it looks as if I'm tickling the air and it's ridiculous. Like tickle, tickle. Anyway. Oh, dear. My, my, my WhatsApp thing is happening and you will hear. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Sorry. Anyway, let's start because tonight I want to talk about take, the verb to take and the different uses that we can find in the language. So as, as um, <laughs> oh, look, Louisa says, hi, Laura, I'm here. Can't be without you. Oh, Louisa, thank you for being here. I'm so happy you are here with me this morning and now you're here. That's fantastic. Linda? Your lesson is very interesting on September. I'll subscribe. Okay, Linda, we'll wait for you. Come one, come all. Simone, if only I had an opportunity like this when I was 11, but in 1982, the internet was not invented yet. Oh my Lord. Yes, I know, Simone. Yes, yes, it's true. But you have the opportunity to do this now. You know, it doesn't matter if you're not 11 any longer. There's always time to learn. Because as somebody pointed out last time, life never stops teaching, you know. And so there's always a chance for learning. And I love that phrase. Whoever said this, was it Raimonda? Somebody said that and I, and I think I want to have it tattooed on my arm. No tattoos, no tattoos, but that's a very interesting statement. So anyway, Simone, if you if you want to join us, please do, because the space in speak. And if you do know some 11 year olds who may benefit from this, please spread the word. Share, 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 share these live streams, share the fact that the space, share the fact that Speak Junior hasn't started yet. So this is a good opportunity for you to discover and find out more calling Carmelinda, telephone number 351-946-6633. Do it now. She will give you all the information you need. And very soon we'll also have a page for you to click on and see all the information in writing. So it's even clearer. But for the moment, while that's still work in progress, call, call the lady. Call Lady Carmelinda. She's ready there. So we're talking about take, take, which is often a source of confusion sometimes. Okay. So it's funny because I always say, let's practice English. Let's be, let's just communicate. Don't worry about being grammatically accurate. Communication is a different thing. And here I am doing grammar with you. But you have to understand that grammar is important and understanding why certain things happen in a certain way is important, but not in stage one, okay? Stage one is listening and communicating and then working on the grammar is important. But because I assume that you're all interested <laughs> in what I say here, then let's have a little bit of grammar, shall we? Joking, only joking. But this is this this could be good. So let's talk about take as the opposite of give. Okay, this is example number one. Well, use number one of take. Take as in the opposite of give. 
So one meaning of take is about gaining possession or receiving. Okay. So look at this example. Have you taken my bicycle? Okay. So the opposite of give is, is actually really literally gaining possession. Have you got my bicycle? Have you taken my bicycle? Or Tony is not here right now. Can I take a message? This is you phoning me looking for Tony, my father-in-law. And I say, no, Tony's not here right now. Can I take a message? Re literally, literally taking the message, gaining possession of the message, receiving the message. At the restaurant, the waiter, he took my plate and gave me a clean one. Took, removed it from me and gave me a clean one. Remember, remember that we take something from or out of or off a place and from a person, okay? So prepositions which go we take can be these ones. Uh, look at this, this example. Can I take 10 euro out of your wallet? Can I? Oh my goodness, it's so hot. Scorching hot. And it's going to be scorching hot for the next 10 days. Can you believe it? I think you can because it's summer after all. Can I take 10 euro out of your wallet? She took the book from his hands. Just examples which you all understand. There's no need to say much about this. They're taking everything away from me. They're taking everything away from me. From me. Any questions here? There's not much to say, is there? It's just simple usage. Take can also be used as in the opposite of put. Remember, pronunciation is put, not pat. Pat is a different verb, it has two Ts, and it's for golf, for example, pat. But this is put, the opposite of put. Take can be used to talk about moving things away from their places, literally away from the places. So if I say, she took off her coat and put on a dressing gown. She took off her coat, this is the coat, she took it off, and she put on a dressing gown. What is a dressing gown? Do you know? Somebody just slammed the door very noisily. Maybe upstairs, maybe outside. Maybe it's the ghost that lives in my house. Today I had this paranormal experience. There was a mirror on the floor in my daughter's bedroom, and the mirror cracked from side to side, as in the Agatha Christie's uh, book. Weird things, I tell you. So she took off her coat and put on a dressing gown. Ooh, comments. La capatoia. Dressing gown. Yeah, it's not a bathrobe, though. A dressing gown is like a vestaglia. A gown, a gown, yeah. A robe, a drown, a gown, drown. It's a different thing. Another example is he took a ring out of his pocket, it's very romantic, and put it on her finger. Took a ring out of his pocket. So this is what we we're saying, moving things from their places, away from their places. No, Raimonda, it's not l'asciugamano, eh? It's not l'asciugamano, that would be a towel, a dressing gown. It's like a vestalia, it's what you wear in the house when you're just relaxing, when you're in the house and it's a little bit cold maybe. Mm, I wear a dressing gown in the winter, for example, over my pyjamas or, I don't know, some, some house clothes, you know. Obviously, the dressing gown is for the house. Do you wear dressing gowns? A dressing gowns used? I use, I use a dressing gown. Um, take... Um, usage number three, because so we're counting. Remember, we've got six plus one. Take is also used as in the opposite of bring. And this is a particularly, like, itchy thing for Italian learners of English, because bring and take often gets confused. Because in Italian, they mean the same thing. The Italian translation could be portare, and it's portare 
either way. There is no difference uh, if you talk about the direction or the position of the speaker or the hearer. In English, which let's remember English is a particularly precise language, there is a difference. So take is the opposite of bring. Take can mean transport, carry. It is used for movements which are not towards the speaker or the hearer. That would be bring. So it really depends on the speaker's or the hearer's position. Bring, let's repeat this, bring is for movements towards where the speaker is, but take is for movements towards other places, from the speaker, from the hearer. So look at this. Let's let's analyze this sentence. You have two here, so perhaps the difference is more clear, is clearer. Example number one is we bring. Portare as in bring. What a nice pub. Thank you for bringing me here. Che bel pub. Grazie di avermi ci portato qui in questo pub. Bring. Okay. But example number two is we take as in portare away from, from the speaker or from the hearer. So let's have one more drink and then I'll take you home. Home is there. We are here. We are having one more drink and then I'll take you home. Ti porto a casa because casa is away from here. Okay, this is important. Let me see your comments. Raimonda says, I used to take my son to play football. Yeah, correct. You used to. He doesn't play football anymore. Or perhaps he's temporarily stopped for the summer. Anna Paula, hi. And Antonella, bring to me. Yeah, exactly. Take to you. Well, depends where you are. It all depends on the position of the speaker or the hearer. Okay. Hi, Leonardo. Hello, good to see you. So this is like, um, who was saying this? Like uh, Raimonda was saying, I'm taking my children to school in this case, but you can take your children to play football somewhere else. You're taking them. Or another example is she took her dog to the vet. She, she's here, dog was here. She took the dog to the vet. Mirko, hi Mirko, hello my friend, I'll see you later. <laughs> we're going, we're going dancing, eh, aren't we? Are you coming? Yeah, you are, aren't you? It's Monday, so we got, we got the dance class later. Number four, number four. This is interesting because of a different reason, because we are entering, ooh, the potentially disastrous world of phrasal verbs. But mind you, there's a, there's a big difference to make here. Not all verbs with prepositions are the so-called phrasal verbs. We will have one, one particular episode on phrasal verbs. Alex has done something as well. I want to do something about phrasal verbs. So this is not the situation. This is not the case tonight. Tonight we're not doing phrasal verbs. But we take, there are a few expressions and combinations of words which can apply. Some are phrasal verbs. Some are not phrasal verbs. So let's make a distinction here. Comments. See you tomorrow? No, tomorrow. Okay. Simone says, just to be romantic, I can say to my lady, bring me your love. <laughs> well, come on, come on, bring me your love. Come on, lady. Is this what you mean? Bring it to me. Not sure I would say that, but I, okay. Let's say, do you have to? But yeah, okay. Raimonda says, I took in a trip around the island. It was marvelous. Yeah, Raimonda. Around the island? What island? Let me know. Make me dream. I want, I want to go to my favorite island. I want to go to Britain. Uh, can't go. I can't go. Not quite yet. It's disastrous, isn't it? The moment. It's not possible. Let's focus on this. I, I, I want you to understand this. So let's have some examples of sentences we take. And these are proper phrasal verbs, which probably you already know. Take off, 
off with double F. Take off, classic example, the plane took off at eight this morning. Now, this is a real phrasal verb. Why is it a phrasal verb to take off? Because it's a verb with this preposition with off, which doesn't, doesn't make logical sense, okay? It, assume, it becomes a different meaning. This verb, together with this preposition, creates a whole new meaning. It's not literal. It's not logically understandable. The next example is even clearer. Take after. Take after, phrasal verb. My daughter takes after me. What does it mean, take after? You cannot reconstruct the meaning if you didn't know that it means look like, resemble. You see, it changes the meaning. So take, it doesn't mean prendere, it doesn't mean move somewhere, it doesn't mean obtain. It means take after, as in look like, resemble somebody. My daughter looks like me, my daughter takes after me, for example, also in the way she behaves, I would say. Uh, Raimonda says, the plane is taking off. I'll show this. The plane is taking off. Would you please fasten your seatbelts? Correct. Yes, yeah, Simone, you meant to be sweet. I know, I know. It's very nice, actually. Very, very nice. But do you understand what I'm saying here? Hmm? Some phrasal verbs, some are not phrasal verbs. Let's look at some combination of take plus another word, so two-word verb, which is, which is not a phrasal verb, like take away. Take away is not a phrasal verb. It's literally take away, moving away from a place. Hmm? For example, he had two tablets to take away the pain. Tablets as in, as in pastic, as in medicine, okay? So he had two tablets to remove the pain. So say you have a headache, you want to remove the pain, take it away. Or I go into a pizzeria and I say, hey, two pizzas to take away, please. Take away. So not a phrasal verb, just verb and preposition. Or take back. Take back. Again, a combination of two words, but not a phrasal verb, because you can understand, you logically do understand what this means. Okay. I didn't like my shirt, so I took it back to the shop. I bought a shirt. I tried it on, didn't like it. I took it back to the shop with my receipt, of course. Take it back to return. Okay. I take back what I said. I said something and I take it back. Literally, take back. Me lo riprendo. Ritiro quello che ho detto. I take back what I said. All right? I don't take for granted what you told me a month ago. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, Alida. To take for granted is to dare per scontato. Interesting how in English is take, but in Italian is give. <laughs> I took care for my children. I took care of my children when they were small, when they were little. Yes, yes, Raimonda, take care of. Hmm? And Alida, I was very exhausted, so I took a break. Yes, this is also one of my examples, Alida. Nice, thank you. So let's go back to the non-phrasal verbs, but combination of verb and preposition. What we said before, can I take off my jacket? Off means from this place, okay? So I have a jacket on, can I take it off? Comments? If the shoes don't fit you, take them back to the shop. Yes, exactly. Not a phrasal verb, but you take them back. Absolutely. Exhausted. Yes, Alida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exhausted. Spelled the second way you did. Correct. Um, just to reinforce this idea of a difference between a phrasal verb and a non-phrasal verb, look at this phrase with take up. Take up. Take up. Do you think this is a phrasal verb or not phrasal verb? If I say, I'm going to take, to take up yoga next winter. Is this a phrasal verb or a non-phrasal verb? Waiting for your comments. Think about the meaning and think about if you can logically understand 
make sense of take and up? Any idea? Come, come, come. Comments waiting for you? No? Anyone? Take up? I'm going to take up yoga next winter. Or I took up jogging in the park in the summer. My niece, oh, Raimonda says, my niece took up playing the piano, but she lost interest after some time. Yeah, same usage, same usage. Alida says it's non-phrasal, non-phrasal verb. What about the others? What do you think? Phrasal or non-phrasal? Mm -hmm. Emanuele is starting. Take up as start, as in start. Start what? Alida now has corrected herself and she changed her mind and she said phrasal. Well, okay, phrasal. This is a phrasal verb we take to take up. Take up a new activity, take up a new hobby, because you do not literally take it up. It's a new hobby that you're starting, that you're beginning, correct. Exactly, Ali, the synonym of begin, to start something. Emanuele, yes, correct, start yoga. Same idea, okay? Phrasal verb, Raimonda, exactly. Because look at this, we take up non-phrasal example. I'm going to take up my bag. I've got a bag, I'm taking it up. <laughs> and I'm taking it up the stairs also. So I'm taking up my bag, I'm taking my bag up, same thing. Non-phrasal, because it's literal, you can understand what I'm saying. I'm not starting a new activity or a hobby called bag. I'm literally taking my bag up. Clear? Phrasal verb, Floriana, yes. Ah, Floriana, didn't see you this morning at lesson. Where were you? I was waiting for you. <laughs> I hope you have a good reason. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so let's let's just carry on with the situations we take. Take is also used in time expressions. Wait, there we go, time, just to make it clear. Time expressions. We can use take to say how much time we need to do something. Okay, so there are, there are different usage of take as in time. Some common structures are, for example... When the person is the subject, I put an A to distinguish it from B and C. So bear in mind, the person is the subject. And there we go. I, the person is the subject. I took one hour to get home from work last night. Io ci ho messo un'ora. Okay, I took one hour. I am the subject. The person is the subject. But take is the verb which indicates the time it took, how much time it took me, or how much time I took to do something. Second situation, same usage, is when B, the activity is the subject. So no longer the person is the subject, but the activity is the subject. Oh, wait a second, got a comment. Yes, yes. Oh, Floriana, I was at school. Oh, sorry. Okay, you're excused. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I, you know that I'm joking, right? Floriana is one of the students of Speak, like Louisa, and like other students that I see occasionally here, which is lovely. Alida says, it took me all day to adjust this. Yes, yes, this is, this is a different situation. This is the C situation, which we're seeing in a second, is the it subject. Now we're still looking at, oh sorry Floriana, we're still looking at B, the activities, the subject. So for example, the journey took me three hours. The journey is the activity, it's the object, okay. This activity, the journey, took me three hours. So I took three hours to do this journey. The journey took me three hours. And then, yes, the C option where the preparatory it is the subject, okay? So you have the it impersonal, um, what's it called, uh, pronoun, <laughs> subject pronoun, which introduces the rest of the phrase. So it took them ages to do the shopping. 
lì ci sono voluti secoli, ages, you can translate it as you want, like a really long period of time. Sometimes it took them forever to do the shopping. This is also used in common spoken expressions, okay? Simone says, no, Raimonda says, I usually take 10 minutes to fall asleep. Oh, really? You're, you're, oh, wow. Good for you. Sometimes it takes me ages to fall asleep. I have to read and read and read or think about things, boring things, and then eventually I fall asleep. So you're lucky, especially these evenings, these nights where it's so hot and humid. That's, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a long job to fall asleep for me. And then I wake up. Simone says, I usually took five minutes to take my homeworks. Usually to take, to take my homework or to do my homework. Singular, singular, homework. Singular. Not plural, Simone. Simonetta, hi, hi. <laughs> Hello to you. So you should say, Simone, I usually took five minutes to do my homework. I used to. I used to be quite, quite quick too in doing my homework. Um, not sure how accurate I was, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't used to take me a long time. To, to do my homework to bad student, bad student, I was bad. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just continue here. Oh, yes. And then there's, so I think this is clear enough, right? We're just vivisecting <laughs> the verb to take in the different meanings, which I like doing. And then we have take and lust. Two verbs, to take and to last. So they're both used to talk about the length of experiences and events. Generally, they're both possible with a slight difference of emphasis. So look at these examples. It was a horrible job. I thought it would take forever. I thought it would take forever because it's a horrible job. I'm doing it. So I'm using the verb to take because I'm actively involved in this process. And this is the main difference. Is it active? Is it passive? Okay. So I'm involved in the job, in this horrible job, and I thought it would take forever. Reported speech. I think it will take forever. I thought it would take forever. But then you have the other example. What a wonderful holiday. I wish it would last forever. I wish it last forever. Not it would take forever but I wish it would last forever. This is something passive. I'm on holiday. My children are playing in the corridor and probably you will hear them as well, but we nearly finished, so I'm not going to stop them. They're lovely. They're playing nicely. So it's passive. It's a passive situation. The holiday is wonderful. What a wonderful holiday. I wish it would last forever. So take and last. Similar concepts, different usage. And then we have number seven, the American usage of take as have, or as, yeah, here I am tickling here, or experience. Hello, do you wanna come and say hello to the people? This, you won't see people here. I'm like, oh, and Richie's here. Sorry, my, my children are here now. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a Facebook live stream. What are you doing, girls? <laughs> Could you close the door? Do you mind? Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. There was an inter. Oh, Richie. Hello. Do you want to speak? Richie's here. He'll probably speak at some point. Just a second. Let me, let me show you, Richie. He wants to say hello. There we go. Richie, say hi. See? You want to be here with me? Do you want to go on the table? Okay. Go on. Hello. Oh, you're thirsty. He will say, I just wanted to drink. And there's his tail. Let me see comments. Yes. Hey, exactly, Raimonda. How long does the lesson last? Yes, that could be one example of the verb last or take. And Raimonda, again, I usually take a shower in the morning. Yes, this is Typically, American English to use take as in have, as in experience, okay? You have a bath in English, British English. You have a bath, you have breakfast, you have lunch, you have a stroll, you have a chat, you have a break. In American English, you take a break, you take a shower, okay? So she takes a shower 
Shower, not shava, but shower. Wait a second, wrong spelling. Oh my goodness, who wrote this? <laughs> I did. I make loads of mistakes because I'm in a hurry sometimes. So she takes a shower every morning. Take, not have, or has in this case. Let's take a break. Okay, so let's have a break. Let's take a break. And that's it. And that's how it's done. Oh, look, Anna Fowler says, Richie, Richie, you're welcome. Richie is here, drinking some water. Probably you can hear him, he's lapping his water. Rich, you come in here to say hi? No, nope, doesn't look like he wants to come and say hi because he's a shy cat. So anyway, that was that. That was the mini bite for the evening. Take a step towards somewhere. Take a step, yeah, yeah. There are so many expressions with with take, but we've analyzed six situations plus one of the usage, okay, the spoken and communicative use of the verb to take. Remember, let me remind you one more time that to put this into practice and not just hearing and listening and reading and taking notes, you can enroll, you can subscribe, and you can become a student of Speak or Speak Junior. So call Carmelinda. She's there. She's waiting for your calls. She's a fantastic, kind, amazing person. She's ready to give you all the information you need about becoming a student. So you would be able, if you enrolled, you'd be able to speak to us, to interact on a regular basis every day and also see Richie, perhaps. Richie, you're coming to say hello? No. Yes, perhaps. Yes, you are. Aren't you? There we go. There's Richie. There's the microphone. You're going to say hi? No, you're just purring. Richie's very hot. Perhaps we'll go on the terrace, shall we? And just to see if there's... Oh, yeah. Richie wants to take him... Wants me to take him along. Take him along. Yeah. Richie, do you want to be taken along? Yeah, perhaps he does. Perhaps he doesn't. I don't know. He just wants to be with his mummy. Here's the mummy. Anyway... Thank you for being with me. We have finished. I've now got lessons, so I have to say bye-bye to you. I hope this was useful to you. I hope it was clear. I hope you learned something useful. And um, just make sure that on Wednesday you connect because Alex is going to be your teacher for the Wednesday. And on Friday, we're having Cree J again. We're having the Speak Junior guest. So make sure you and your teen friends <laughs> connect and interact. They can ask him all the questions they want in English, of course. And Christian will answer in English. And he's beautiful, amazing English. That kid has really got great English. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your company, for being with me. And I'll see you on Friday. Bye.